Hey everybody, thank you, thank you so, so much for tuning into this video. In this clip, I want to talk about what I have learned on the more ketogenic way of living and the ketogenic way of eating. So, the number one thing I found is that you really, really do need to be a detective. You need to read those ingredients on that packaging very carefully. Now, of course, you don't necessarily have to. And the difference here is that are you doing a clean form of keto or are you doing a more dirty form of keto? So what do I mean by that? Well, a big inflammatory, at least for me and I think a lot of other people, is inflammation. There are things that manufacturers will put into food to extend the shelf life and to really make it, you know, very palatable to the majority of people who are purchasing this stuff. So they'll put things like the seed oils, they'll put like all those preservatives. So there are so many videos on like how to shop on a clean keto and things like that, and they'll tell you what to avoid. But my number one thing that I'm trying to avoid now is, you know, the secret canola oil, the different maltose, dextrose, anything that has a uh, high fructose corn syrup integrated in it in some way. Because now if you're reading the package, yeah, whatever you have, it might say it only has one gram of carbohydrate per serving, you think, hey, that's awesome, that's great. But if you read that ingredient list, it also is made with a high fructose corn syrup. It's got canola oil, it's got all these different preservatives. So definitely a key that I found is that the shorter the list, the better and the shorter the list and the things that you actually can pronounce and know what the heck they are. So, like, um, burger meat, it should be beef. And maybe, you know, salt, pepper to taste or something like that. And then you have, like, salads, you know, it should be whatever, whatever those vegetables are in there. Um, you know, a lot of salad dressing, even though it might be marketed as a, a low carb or a sugar free sauce, it's going to have all that extra stuff added to it. Um, <clears throat> one particular brand of sauce that I've been trying to be very, very careful of buying, but I still have it just like for like being like in a pinch. And also because when I have people, like when I have my family over, that kind of stuff, I want them to at least have food that they're going to be able to enjoy with me. So I'll have these different sauces for them so they can still have their uh, salad and they can still have their burger or whatever I'm making and can still enjoy themselves. But... I'm not going to be getting things on a regular basis that, um, you know, really aren't good for you in the long term. And that's another thing. Um, you need to do your research. A lot of grocery stores, um, when they have their rotisserie chickens, or like you're thinking, hey, rotisserie chicken, that's great. Um, but you gotta read the, like what are they doing to it? Because they're gonna take a chicken that is not very good quality or is getting ready to um, expire. In order to get rid of it, they're going to cook it up and they'll use like these different oils and seasonings. Now, not all supermarkets do this, but a lot of like mom and pop shop type of things or a lot of, uh, very small, small grocery stores are probably gonna do that, but you need to do your research and make sure you know. Now, 
Of course, in a pinch, that's great. That's fine. But don't make it your everyday lunch, a rotisserie chicken. Or don't make your lunch chicken wings because they're going to fry those in a soy oil, canola oil, seed oil, that sort of stuff. So at the end of the day, research is my number one thing, and I'm going to try and get better about it. But so um, here are my stats, my skin, feeling great, energy is up, pain in my foot, gone. And I'm willing to think that that was just from working out a little too much recently. And when I kind of took a little bit of a break from it, from a very rigorous exercise routine, my, my foot pain went away. Um, that's another thing. I still don't necessarily know all my numbers. I go to the doctor in a few weeks to get my um, A1C checked out again because I am now officially off metformin and I intend to stay off of metformin. So they, here's hoping for good numbers. My weight, still about 174, 175 ish, somewhere around there. So that's about 90 pounds of weight loss. So yeah, thank you so, so much for uh, tuning into this video. Thank you for hearing me out. Let me just kind of just this random fella talking on a camera and posting videos to YouTube. But take care, please like, content, and subscribe, and um, share your video, this video with all your friends and family. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.